Associated Press. Live from Wave 3 TV, where coverage comes first, this is Wave 3 News at 6 with Jackie Hayes, Alan Denton, meteorologist John Belsky, Bob Domini Sports, and troubleshooter Nell Taylor. Nearly two months after leading the Wildcats to a national victory, Coach Rick Pitino talks about fulfilling yet another dream. Because this is not a coaching change, this is a career move. And I've been here seven years, probably uh, six years longer than you all thought I'd be here. Um, Good evening, I'm Julie Nelson, along with Alan Denton. Jackie Hayes is off today. In April, the University of Kentucky Wildcats won their first national championship in 18 years. The man leading the team, Coach Rick Patino. But today, Patino announced he's seriously considering a coaching job with the New Jersey Nets. Way 3's Bob Domini is here, and he begins our team coverage. Bob, a grim day for UK fans today. Well, I mean, it's not over yet. Like Coach Patino said, don't close the door yet. But you may recall that Rick Patino was offered the head coaching job for the Nets just a few weeks back. He turned it down. He said he also wanted part ownership. Well, folks, the Nets are now offering part ownership, along with head coaching and general manager duties. Patino talked with the media today and said, I'm interested. And I've been here seven years, probably uh, six years longer than you all thought I'd be here. Um, and seven years is a long time. You establish roots. Uh, there are things in this, in this state that I'm very proud of outside of basketball that are a very big part of my life. Um, and uh, a, a very, very big part, much bigger than you could ever imagine. And I'd be leaving behind a lot more than just a great basketball program. But let me say this. When I came here, this program was in much worse shape than you can even imagine because you don't know certain things that were... You know probation, you know sanctions, you know limited scholarships and limited players, but there was more to it than that. And today, I can honestly say, seven years through the, through the, hard, works of our, uh, the hard work of our administration, the hard works of a variety of different coaches that have moved on, and most important, the hard work of the players, this program today is a total model of excellence. Well, I've got to agree there. He did everything he was asked to do. If he's going to leave, all we can do is wish him well. And I'll tell you this, wherever I've been today, it's been, what, five or six hours since he made the announcement, everyone is talking about this. Mm -hmm. Everyone has got an opinion. I've got mine. I'm going to do that a little later on in sports yeah. and tell you what I think about the whole deal. Well, simple enough. How can he not say no? He's accomplished what he set out to do here. And, You're giving uh, away my commentary. Chance, to, <laughs> chance to go back home. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll, right. I'll, I'll give you equal time all all right. later. Right. It's a deal. Thanks, Thanks Bob. Bob. Well, today's news is the last thing many Wildcat fans wanted to hear. Patino is credited with turning the U.K. basketball team around. Wave 3's Kimberly Hicks continues our live team coverage from Lexington. Kim, I can only imagine what the reaction is there. Well, it's a mixed bag. Some folks are saying perhaps the time is right, and other folks think that he should stay. And we spent the day here at campus, and here's what some folks are thinking. Yeah, he's done a great job here, and I think he's done as much as he can. Anything he does from now on will be, well, he's already done that. Or if he doesn't, you know, maintain the same level, then he might be viewed as more of a failure than he, than he is. He's done a fantastic job digging this program out from uh, where it was. He has won a championship, but I don't think that that ought to be his ultimate goal. I mean, I think he's got responsibilities to uh, the athletes and to the university. You know, all the ownership, that's what he's been looking for, that now may be a good time to go after coming off a national championship season. I hope he doesn't go, just like all the other fans, but I don't think anybody could blame him. And, you know, I just wish him, wish him the best and hope he has as much success there as he does here, but I'd love for him to stay. As you can see, a mixed bag, and of course, we'll all have to wait and see what happens. Julie? All right, thanks a lot, Kimberly. A local UK fan reaction to the possible loss of Rick Pitino was predictable. As Wave 3's Dave McDemon reports, some think he'll take the money, but others say he'll stay with the Wildcats. I can understand. We haven't lost him yet. No, we haven't. <laughs> Damon's is a popular restaurant and watering hole for local sports fans, and Patino is a big topic of conversation, and sentiments are similar. I hope he stays. I don't want him to go. We don't want to lose him. We want another championship. He's good. We need him here in Kentucky. <laughs> I'm shocked. I hope he stays. But if it's a better offer, I can understand him wanting to leave. I think professionally it would be a mistake on his part, but financially, obviously, it's going to pay off. So you really can't blame him. 
I think you ought to stay at Kentucky and give us another. Stay, stay at Kentucky and give us another Final Four next year. Get us another, get another ring on his finger. I just think he's a cool guy. I just, I think he's done a lot with Kentucky and he's stuck with them in the bad times. And I want him to stay. <laughs> Marvin Weber may be the ultimate UK basketball fan. Over the years, he's collected more than 15,000 separate items of UK basketball memorabilia, and he's a big Rick Pitino fan as well. Weber says Pitino is the most exciting thing that's come to Kentucky for a long time. I'd be the first one to put up $1,000 uh, if we need more money in the pot for him to stay. Uh, I'd be the first one to go statewide uh, to keep him here. Jack Guthrie is a new UK trustee and past national president of the UK alumni. It's quite a deal, and from a personal and business standpoint, uh, he has to take a look at it, and I think he's being very upfront. There's more to Kentucky, to the heart of this situation, than just being a partner and owning a basketball team. And uh, I honestly think he'll turn it down. But Guthrie says whatever happens, Patino has kept all of his promises, including winning a national championship. Dave Doc Damon, Way 3 News. In other news tonight, family and friends are mourning the loss of former Kentucky State Treasurer Francis Jones Mills. Mills died at Jewish Hospital this morning just before 5.30. No other details about her death were released. Mills had a long career in Democratic politics that in the end was plagued by scandal. In addition to her title of state treasurer, Mills also served as secretary of state and clerk of the Court of Appeals. She was 75 years old. The mayor of Shively says it's time for change, so he's asking the police chief to step down. Mayor Jim Jenkins says he wants to replace Chief Andy Hicks with someone who will improve the department's image. The mayor says he wants the department to go in a different direction. We don't have any impending charges or any lawsuits against the city or any of that. Uh, we just think that uh, maybe it's time to make some changes. The mayor says Hicks' replacement will come from within the department. We tried to reach Chief Hicks, but he was unavailable for comment. Louisville and Jefferson County police break up what they call a burglary ring. Police say the thieves stole thousands of dollars worth of merchandise from storage facilities to buy crack cocaine. Way 3's Bob Allen joins us live from Fern Valley Road where the thieves were arrested. Bob? Well, Allen, I'm at the Pro Bowl storage bin and police say the thieves operated in broad daylight with no fear. Now one man would come by and break the locks while the other would follow, raise the door, and load up their car with anything of value. Yeah. Police say Troy Avery and Vito Taylor made a career out of breaking into storage bins in Kentucky and Indiana. Avery and Taylor were arrested yesterday after they allegedly robbed Pro Bowl storage for the 71st time. Since January, police say the pair has committed more than 200 robberies, stealing thousands of dollars in merchandise. Anything from A to Z, like guns, uh, air conditioner, TVs, rings, jewelry, um, anything that's fensible or they can pawn. Police confiscated dozens of pawn tickets from the pair. Apparently, they had taken the merchandise to places like Dan's Cash America. Detectives believe the stolen goods were traded in for cash, which they used to buy crack cocaine. Pro Bowl owner Tom Thinneman says thieves took a $500 air conditioner from his property. He asked one of them why they hit his place. As many times as we've been hit, why do you keep hitting me? He said, because you don't have an automatic gate. Thinneman had a code box with an automatic gate, but after the state expanded Fern Valley Road, he had to get rid of it. If a car is sitting there waiting to push the button, it, he's going to get hit by the state, by, by the cars coming down the street. There's just no room for him to pull up. There's no room, him. and I've called the state, I've called people, and everybody I call, I, I'm a nobody. Both Pro Bowl Storage and its customers have suffered big losses. Police want customers to check their bins to see if they've been robbed. They um, have been cutting the locks and then placing their locks. So if they get there and they see a lock on it, it doesn't necessarily mean it hadn't been broken into. They need to check. Now, Avery and Taylor both face multiple counts of burglary and theft. 
Police have recovered some of the stolen goods, but they're asking anyone who thinks their storage bin may have been broken into to contact Detective Seidel or Rumpel at the 5th Precinct or call the Jefferson County Burglary Unit. Alan? All right, All right thank you, Bob. Two men involved in yesterday's shootout with Jefferson County Police go before a jury today. A and judge, it, rather. And it appears this is not their first brush with the law. We'll have the latest when we come back. Tired of politicians who waffle on the issues? I'm Marsha Weinstein, and as your next county commissioner, I'll never waffle on the issues. A leader with vision. You and I share a vision of a better future for Jefferson County. A leader with a detailed plan. We can reorganize our government so it makes sense. The Courier Journal has endorsed Marsha Weinstein, saying she is much more decisive than her opponent. A leader for all Jefferson County. Weinstein, County Commissioner. This camel can travel 50 miles in desert heat without taking fluid, making it one of the world's most dependable animals. This automobile system can also travel up to 50 miles in desert heat without a single drop of coolant, which tells you something about its dependability. Cadillac DeVille, now better than ever with a North Star system. Now just $4.69 a month with $26.75 down. Visit your Cadillac dealers, your luxury leaders. It's coming. Something so big, it will change the way you shop forever. It's the big event at Smith's. Now through Memorial Day, get this 13-inch color TV for only $119. Whirlpool two-speed washer, now just $299. Hot Point big 21 cubic foot refrigerator, only $488. There has never been a sale this big before. The big event, now at Smith's Furniture Appliance and Electronics. Take a look at these clothes. They're really on the ball. And at Burlington Coat Factory, you can get them for about half what you'd pay in the department store. You'll score points in fine quality and designer suits. You'll be at the top of your game in lightweight blazers and wool blend slacks. You'll jump for wrinkle-free cotton pants, terrific banded collar shirts, and very cool vests. So come on, guys. Take a fast break to Burlington Coat Factory. They're more than great coats. Cardinal Dodge salutes Memorial Day. Big savings on newer used Dodge cars and trucks. Plus, we'll give you an extra $200 if you can show that you or anyone in your family has served in the military in the last 50 years. It's Cardinal Salute to Memorial Day sale, 5311 Dixie Highway, 449-1900. An autopsy report is in on a robbery suspect killed by a Jefferson County police officer. Meanwhile, the other men involved in yesterday's shootout had their first court appearance today. Wave 3's Eldora Jackson has an update in the case. William Williams, 63. Yes, Delure for Mr. Williams, Judge Wally. 20-year-old William Lawrence Williams and 19-year-old Antonio Jawan McBride survived the shootout with Jefferson County police. But today, they face the judge on charges of robbery, kidnapping, and disorderly conduct. They weren't alone in their alleged robbing spree. Their friend, Terrell Tolbert, lost his life in a shootout with police. He was hiding in the pickup. The officer came around the corner down the sewer line, uh, spotted him. Uh, he jumped up, came out of the uh, pickup truck, at least fired two shots after being ordered to drop his gun. It all began when the three suspects tried to rob this pizza hut on the outer loop. But their attempts failed, so they drove to this Lee's Lane quick shop and forced the clerk to hand over cash. The suspects led officers on a high-speed chase, but finally, police caught up with them. Officer Baron Morgan gave Tolbert a chance to give up, but he didn't take it. The coroner says Tolbert took a bullet in the back. The bullet entered the lower part of the right back in the medial area, right below the right shoulder blade. Okay, that did travel, apparently perforating the lung. A coroner's inquest is on tap for this case. Tolbert did not have a police record, but McBride and Williams are no strangers to crime. McBride has been arrested before for auto theft, traffic violations, using an alias, and wanton endangerment of a police officer. Williams' record is worse. In July of last year, he was arrested for speeding, driving without a license, and driving on expired tags. Five months before that, in February, police nabbed him for carrying drugs in a car and then trying to dispose of them. 
Then in 1994, they arrested him for reckless driving and carrying a concealed weapon. Both men will have a preliminary hearing June 3rd. For now, they remain in jail on a $100,000 bond. Eldora Jackson, Wave 3 News. There's a dispute between the county police and the coroner's office. The coroner says he did not get the call to look at Tolbert's body until two hours after he was dead. County police say it is simply a mix-up. Big weekend coming up, Memorial Day. Everybody's cooking out. Will you, you be firing up the grill? I'll be firing up the grill. I'm sure John will be too, but right now he's getting a freebie, John. That's right. <laughs> well, you know, I'm working hard out oh, here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have already had breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm going back for seconds after I do the weather with a taste of Hurstborn. More on the Foster Brooks Pro Celebrity Weekend and that important holiday weekend forecast coming right at you after this. Introducing a very special automobile. Being built in limited numbers doesn't make it special, nor the fact it's available for a limited time. Even adding air conditioning, automatic transmission, and AM-FM stereo isn't that unusual. But when all this describes a Honda Accord at $16,995, nice. special sounds downright inadequate. I've made a decision to run a positive campaign based on the issues. In regards to the bridge, I've asked you, I've listened to you, and I agree with you. Let's quit talking about it and build it where you want it in the East End. You've told me you want teeth in our zoning laws, that we need to protect our environment. I agree. That's why I'm taking measures to protect you against irresponsible development. Working for you then, working for you now. Let's keep Russ Maple our county commissioner. Hurry in for big savings in every department at Circuit City's Memorial Day weekend sale. Get a $150 instant discount on any computer. Save on Packard Bell, Compaq, Apple, NEC, and more. And get a $25 instant discount on all printers and monitors. Plus, get no interest and no payments till 1997 on all big screen TVs 32 inches and larger. All appliances $399 and up. And all camcorders $399 and up. It's all going on at Circuit City's Memorial Day weekend sale. Don't miss it. It's sale days at Bachman Chevrolet. And the number one Chevy store in Kentucky and a will save you money. Cavaliers, Berettas, Trackers, Custom Vans, and over 65 Corvettes, all specially priced during Bachman's sale days. Factory rebates up to $1,500, plus Bachman's own huge discounts on over 500 cars, trucks, and vans. We want your business, so come in today. Bachman Chevrolet sale days end May 31st. Turn to the best when the weather's at its worst. Tom Wills, Craig Edwards, and John Belsky. Storm Center 3 on Wave 3 News, where coverage comes first. Ready, fired up the grills, and we know somebody who will not be left behind when it comes to food, our very own John Belsky. You know, I was just thinking, uh, forget the grill this afternoon, you're going to grill your burgers out on the sidewalk, it was so hot. <laughs> a little warm out there at Hurstbourne? Yeah, a little warm. Uh, we're at the Taste of Hurstbourne Form Shopping Center, North Hurstbourne Parkway, less than 50 tickets remaining at 25 bucks, proceeds to Cosair Children's Charities. This is part of the Foster Brooks weekend. Of course, we've got the big turn tennis, turn tennis and golf tournament <laughs> at Hurstbourne Country Club on Monday. Hope the weather holds out for that. Uh, here's A.J. Pasifumi and Sons Fruit there. Looks looks like I'm in Hawaii or something. How about that? And uh, how about some cheesecake for dessert here? Hey, we don't count our calories on holiday weekends, do we? This is Adam Matthews Cheesecake. Where, where are you all located? Uh, we're located right here in Louisville on Hurstbourne Lane. All right, gotcha. And uh, all right, here's a most unusual looking sandwich here, Harper's Restaurant. And uh, here's our chef here who's going to describe uh, what do we have here? A portobello mushroom sandwich. A portobello mushroom sandwich. Yes. I, I gotta have this. I mean, I love portobello mushrooms. All right. Killer, killer. You got on the sandwich. You got a wheat bun, marinated portobello mushroom, a little Carolina coleslaw, leaf lettuce, a little chipotle mustard. Gives it a kick right then. And that uh, thing going. I assume this is on your menu at the restaurant, right? How did you know that? Oh man, well, I'm gonna say. Well, I'm sorry. Oh, this no, is no, mine. No, okay. No, okay. No. <laughs> Here, go right ahead. I'll, I'll get one after weather. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, let's check the uh, race day weather out for Sunday. This is the biggest race weekend of the year. Whoa, Indianapolis, watch out. 60% chance of thunderstorms Sunday. Could be trouble there. Dry weather up in Michigan for the USA 500. And hey, NASCAR fans, I love this race in Charlotte. 30% chance of storms and highs in the 80s down in Charlotte for Sunday. All right, back home here. We have been sweating it out this afternoon. 89 right now with a heat index of 93. At least a little bit of a breeze here. 91 are high and 72 was the low temperature for this morning. Look at Indianapolis. I can't get over this. This front is just north of Louisville. 89 here. It is 70 in Bloomington. 63 in Indianapolis right now. Weather radar showing thunderstorm activity in the colder air. Strong, uh, very strong thunderstorms moving in on Terre Haute right now. And I would say if you live Seymour on north, watch for some gusty thunderstorms later this evening. Now, as far as the weekend is concerned, here's the big question mark. This front that's stalling out. And uh, we're not quite sure if we're going to be just north or just south of this front. And there's a big difference in the weather. Uh, rain likely north of the front. Hot, humid weather south of the front. Uh, I think we'll drop south uh, at least for part of the weekend with some thunderstorms. Forecast weather map for tomorrow has a threat of some severe weather possible in the Ohio Valley. Could get a few isolated, uh, very gusty thunderstorms at some point during the day. Most likely either early morning or late afternoon. Southern Kentucky 90s. And then you get up north of Indianapolis only in the 60s again tomorrow. As far as Sunday is concerned, Again, that front hanging in there with a chance, no all-day rain, but a chance of thunderstorms and high temperatures. Again, a wide range in re temperatures expected across the Ohio Valley for Sunday. So if you're heading south, you're going to be hot. If you're heading north of the weekend, take a jacket with you. Here's the way the weekend forecast shapes up. 68 degrees tonight, 40% chance of a thunderstorm here in Louisville after midnight. And again, we'll watch those heavy storms north of us during the evening. Cooler, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to be on the cool side of that front. Not by much, though. South of us, much hotter. 80 with a, a chance of storms tomorrow, 78 Sunday and Monday, and again, that continued chance of thunderstorms. About, uh, oh, there's a bunch of celebrities that are coming to town for this tennis and golf tournament Monday, and they tell me about 20 of them are going to be here as the evening goes on. They're open here until uh, 9.30, so uh, folks that have tickets, or if you want to know real quick and get one of the last few remaining tickets, uh, you get some autographs and uh, meet some famous Hollywood celebrities, and I'm going to have this portobello mushroom sandwich here. Yum. <laughs> Sounds good. Right now. All right. Good Thanks deal. So okay. Go for it, John. All right. More on the Rick Pitino situation when we come back. And we'll hear Bob Dominey's opinion on whether he'll stay or leave. Rick Pitino, of course, plus a Louisville native prepares for his first start in the Indianapolis 500. Way 3 Weather is brought to you by Shelby Supply in Shelbyville, your local John Deere dealer. When asked, 9 out of 10 people say they'd rather be on vacation than at home. Come on. Of course, most of the people they asked didn't own a John Deere. Because in survey after survey, folks are more satisfied with John Deere than other lawn tractors. Honey, it's green. It sure is. Visit 2M Tractor in Shepherdsville and Shelby Supply in Shelbyville. It's a huge three-day blowout Memorial Day weekend with Louisville Speedway. This Friday night, join us for the first jewel of the Triple Crown of figure eight racing, the Commonwealth Dodge Twin 25s. Plus, see the sportsman and Ricky Street Stocks burn up the oval. Saturday night puts you in the middle of action with the late models and the thunder trucks on the short track. And the Trackmaster Modifieds invade for the first time in 96 to take on the long track. Then Sunday, it's the Miller Genuine Draft Demolition Derby. Along with the action of the Street Stocks and the Mini Cup cars, three big days of action at Louisville Speedway. Here's a special announcement. The event, Public Liquidation Sale, the location, Star Ford at Oxmoor. Between the hours of 10 a.m. Thursday and 6 p.m. Monday, 650 new and used vehicles are being sacrificed for immediate dispersal. All vehicles clearly marked with special liquidation prices, some below factory invoice. All bids considered. Buy or lease any new or used vehicle with nothing down. Trade-ins welcome. Special finance rates. Don't miss your opportunity to save thousands on a new or used car, truck, or van. Any not sold by Monday will be offered to wholesalers. Hurry to Star Ford at Oxmoor. When some people experience the early warning signs of a heart attack, they write them off as indigestion or stress. But 500,000 Americans die of heart attacks each year. And because she waited so long, this woman was almost one of them. How lucky will you be? Don't ignore a heart attack's warning signs. If you ever experience chest pain, get help immediately. The story, of course, Rick Patino, And we have talked ad infinitum.
As you heard earlier, UK coach Rick Pitino said today he's considering a job offer from the NBA's New Jersey Nets. It supposedly calls for a $25 million contract over an unspecified number of years. I've been contacted by, by quite a few teams, and, and basically I have not, all I've said is thank you very much and, and moved on, except I was honest with you about the Los Angeles Lakers. I did consider that. And I am considering the New Jersey Nets right now. In the short time since Patino's announcement this morning, I've run into at least a dozen people, all who have decided opinions on just what he should do. The diehard Kentucky fans feel he has a good deal here. He's secure for the rest of his life in a quality environment. Others feel he'd be a fool to turn down the big bucks NBA deal. Now, I sympathize with the former, but I agree with the latter. He's gone. While I feel he enjoys the Kentucky ambiance, he was born and raised in New York, folks. The East Coast mentality that absolutely drives us up the wall, he thrives on. It was just a few weeks ago he considered a job from the New York Nets, insisted the only stumbling block was a share of the club ownership. The Nets are now offering that as part of the package. He'll also be general manager, and he'll be coach. Total control. He'll answer to no one. At Kentucky, he accomplished what he set out to do seven years ago, raise the program to a level of unquestioned respectability and, if possible, win an NCAA title. Done. But fear not, Blue, the architect of the Wildcat Renaissance is alive and well. Athletic director C.M. Newton just signed a new four-year contract. The future, with or without Rick Pitino, is in good hands. Just wish him well, whatever he decides. Scott Harrington was the slowest qualifier for this year's Indianapolis 500. But he did qualify and will start in the last row in Sunday's race. Harrington now resides in Indianapolis, but was born and raised right here in Louisville. He had a DUI conviction over 10 years ago that cost him his sponsorship. But now he is trying to take advantage of the biggest break in his career, making that indie field. Gary Fogle had a chance to visit with him yesterday up in Indianapolis. Scott Harrington has waited a long time for this opportunity. Since 1984, this 32-year-old has raced on the minor league circuit, so to speak. But now, through perseverance and all the money he and his dad could scrape up, he's going to race it in. I wanted to be here, and whatever it took to be here is, is, is what I'm going to do. So that's what we've done, and fortunately, it's, uh, it's paid off. A lot of money that I have. Can you tell us how much? And a lot of money that I don't have. <laughs> And I can't tell you how much, but it, to me, it's an awful lot of money. Maybe the most difficult thing for Harrington to do to raise money to get him here was he sold his 1977 vintage Porsche, a car he was in love with. And his fiance topped that. She sold her car to give him money to get here as well. This is just what we had to do to get here. So it was, you know, I sold my car and then he sold his car. So. But hopefully if he wins, I'll get a new car. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to wait to see how we finish and how much prize money we make. <laughs> see how much uh, we have left over after we pay for the other cars. So how'd you get here today? Hitchhike? No. <laughs> um, we borrowed an 87 Ford Tempo from Scott's dad. <laughs> Harrington's overhead just to practice and race here at Indy will cost between two hundred fifty and three hundred thousand dollars is guaranteed to make about 150000 just for starting in the 500. They hope their three sponsors will cover the rest. If we win the race or finish second, you know, I can break out positive. Anything after that, it's negative. No matter what happens, Louisville's Scott Harrington will have competed in one of sports' premier events. Gary Fogle, Wave 3 Sports. You know, it's always fun to follow somebody, especially from your own hometown. We got Scott Harrington. We had uh, Danny Sullivan. You know, All right. Early. All right, thanks a lot, Bob. We'll be back right after this. Wave 3 News is brought to you by Kentucky Kingdom, the Thrill Park. Now open weekends. Look for special discounts on Pepsi cans. Look, someone left the Ford dealership across the street. That's how they can do our lot. So maybe the Great American Ford Sales event isn't so great after all. How do I look? More bad news for the competition. Get a thousand cash back on Ford Windstar, rated highest in a recent safety test, and now get separate front and rear air and heat at no extra charge. Hey, Steve, wake everybody up. We got a customer. Uh, they're just turning around. Get these great deals on Windstar at your local Ford dealer. Cancer. It can affect so many parts of our bodies, our lives. The physicians and staff of Norton Hospital Cancer Treatment Center are experts on today's treatment options for all types of cancer and are busy researching the breakthroughs of tomorrow. 
Norton Hospital Cancer Treatment Center. When it comes to cancer treatment, it's the natural choice. This weekend, you can find a furniture sale just about anywhere. But only at Rhodes Memorial Day Half-Off Sale can you find guaranteed values on brand name furniture. You'll get half-off items throughout the store, like this Simmons sofa and love seat, or this mahogany bedroom. Plus, you'll make no payments and pay no interest for an entire year. Brand names at the lowest prices during the Memorial Day Half-Off Sale at Rhodes, formerly Crossroads, because this country isn't afraid to pay less for great furniture. Down in our part of the country, nothing brings good friends together like sitting down around the dinner table. Skillet fried corn, sliced tomatoes, hot scratch biscuits, and a platter full of good old Clifty Farm country ham. The juiciest, most delicious country ham there is. Uh, would you pass the red eye gravy, please? Right down to the red eye gravy. Look for the label that says Clifty Farm, real Tennessee country ham. Nick King, an American success story. Nick King, raised in public housing, a Vietnam veteran who worked his way through college, now a judge on Kentucky's Supreme Court. Nick King. As Commonwealth's attorney, Nick King fought to stop domestic violence and child abuse. We convicted 90% of the felons we faced. And we start at the rocket docket to put criminals on trial faster and cut government waste. Prosecutor, reformer, a champion for families. Nick King, Supreme Court. For a video cassette copy of a news story, call Shandwick, USA.